Welcome to our summer 2024 wrap up video. We have not vlogged very much this summer, mostly because we needed a well-deserved break from being creative and making videos just to go live life. So this will catch you up on some of the things that happened this summer. Thanks for watching. This is uh, about four months in. It's the start of October now. We got started in June. Everything about it has been amazing. We have loved van life and we definitely want to continue this. There's been a lot of challenges, but it's all things that we've been able to overcome and we don't have any regrets. Right now we're camped outside of Mount Hood. We're on a Forest Service dispersed campsite and now it's basically empty because it is cold. <laughs> There's a beautiful river here that comes down from the mountains. We can't quite see Mount Hood from here, but on the drone view you can fly up and see the mountain right over the ridge. <laughs> And then coming up this winter, we plan to do a California trip, an Arizona trip, and then probably stay on the uh, Oregon coast for the winter. Some of the things we did in this first summer was we went and we camped at Promontory Park. We started off there because we needed to stay close to the city because we were getting our son moved into college in the area. So that was our first priority. So we just had a regular campground for that. After that, we moved over to Metzler Park, which is a county park, and we just did some of their van life spots, which is basically just a parking spot. That provided a great place to base everything out of so that we would spend our days over at the Milo McIver State Park where we got an annual pass. So for $30, we could go in all the time instead of just paying $5 a day. So that was a really smart move. The summer was very, very hot. Uh, we struggled a lot with trying to get rid of heat uh, and the whole area was way too hot. We could have gone further north or up in the mountains or towards the coast or something, but we wanted to make sure we were close to the Portland area so that we were available for our son if he needed any help. We went to the 4th of July parade in Estacada, Oregon, and I had a great time at that. It was very small town. It really reminded me of my childhood growing up in Ashland, and that was really nice. We haven't used the bikes very much, so we are going to be selling them. Having the bikes was quite a challenge and it was important to me in the beginning. We had the cargo rack fail early on and then the bikes have barely been holding on. But we did make it up to the Banks Bernonia bike trail, which is a converted railroad grade that uh, I've always wanted to do one of these. So we made it up there and we did it and it was fun. Uh, it turns out that one of the times that we drove over a bump in the bus, my bike, the rear tire must have hit the ground because it sort of tacoed a little bit. It was fun, but it wasn't enough fun to justify the hassle of having the bikes with us. So we're gonna move those on. Something I've wanted to do for quite a while has been to go to an air show. Living in Southern Oregon, there's not any big cities that are nearby that we could have gone to something like that too easily. Uh, but there is an air show in McMinnville, which is just outside of Portland. So we made time to go to that and that was a lot of fun. We made a whole trip of it and did harvest hosts and met a bunch of people and then made it down to the city for the air show. We weren't allowed to go on the property because you're not allowed to bring buses, uh, pets, uh, any liquids or like basically anything because we live in our house. So obviously we can't go in there. Today is Friday and the air show is actually Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So we were able to find this park that's right next to the airport. Like, like we can almost throw a rock to the runway. It's going to be closed the rest of the weekend. But for today they're doing practice and we were able to watch all of this from way up close way better than we're gonna get for tomorrow or the next day. We saw some prop planes that were doing their flights around, uh, and then we got to see some F-18 fighter jets, and then a cargo plane, and all of them were pretty amazing. So, so here's some footage of that from the day that will probably be the closest that we're gonna be. Yeah, there's the cargo plane coming over. This is so fun. I love planes. <laughs> it's Saturday of the air show and it starts in a couple hours and we are attempting to find a side road that we can go watch it at, which may or may not work out, we don't know. I only found it on the maps. All right, so our first spot did not pan out. Turns out they had uh, blocked off this area as well, uh, and the farmers clearly don't want people just parking on the side of the road here. So we're gonna go with our spot number two. Well, we made it to spot number two, but it is you not gonna work either. Basically all these farms are just too much in use. This 
this spot is not gonna work. <laughs> well, this is where we ended up. We're in a parking lot a little ways away and the parking lot's empty and it doesn't say no uh, event parking or anything. So hopefully this will be a good spot for the rest of the day. We're back for air show day two. This time we have snacks. <laughs> One of the things I love about van life is that we can just set up a meal right out here in the parking lot while there's an air show going on. <laughs> Later on in the summer, we finally met up with one of my college friends and his wife. So we got the GPS coordinates and we met up on one day. Uh, we got up here a day early and kind of claimed the spot since these are all first come first serve. And then we met them up here and just had a great time. We really reconnected. Later on, we went back to the Portland area and met with them and I got some beautiful drone shots of the St. John's Bridge, which is iconic and just amazing. Got it at sunset. I enjoyed that. So we've been camping off grid here for a little bit and we pull down on the road and there's this rhythmic thumping sound. In the past I've had it as a tread separation where you get a bulge and that's what causes that thumping. But we checked that and we refilled all the tires and that wasn't it. So we finally figured it out. And I've never had this happen before. It's a dually problem. So look at this. So at some point we ran over this rock and it got jammed in between the tires. So we have two options. I can either jack it up and take the tire off and then that would obviously fix it. I don't really want to do that. So instead I'm going to deflate the outer tire and then pry bar the rock out and then reinflate the tire. So pretty sure it'll work, but wow, we're on the side of the road fixing this. I mean, you'd think people would be like, what are you doing with a crowbar on your tires? <laughs> They're like, that's not the right tool for whatever you're doing. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, it's not going at all that way. Oh, we might get it. Oh, oh yay. Did you hurt your hand though? That was it. Oh my gosh. And yes. Oh. <laughs> that is a big rock. Oh, that's it. Goodbye, rock. Okay, so all done. Pretty confident this is going to work. Some of the things that didn't work so well in the first four months. We did break our radiator reservoir on literally the first day, but that was an easy fix. The hitch rack also broke in the first like month that we were up here, uh, so that had to get removed. We're getting rid of the bikes next week, and that means that the bike rack will go. Its biggest problem was that it would bounce hugely whenever we would go over any bumps. We got rid of the big easy up that we had in the beginning of the year. Uh, it's just too big and it didn't solve enough problems. And if it gets wet and then we have to put it away wet, then that's not gonna be good for anybody. So we moved that on. We spent 27 hours at a Les Schwab replacing our brakes and our tires because the brakes went to metal on metal and the tires were all cracked. Here's some footage of that as well because we did take video of that one. <laughs> 
We heard some grinding sound in our brakes the other day, uh, and obviously that's bad. So we came into Les Schwab to uh, get our brakes checked and our tires checked. Turns out the rear rotor and pad had gone metal to metal. So that's gonna be $1,200 to fix. And then they pointed out on our tires that there are cracks in them. And that's not even the bad tire. So they are really bad and the, the guy was really nice. He was like, this is not gonna work. You should not drive on this. So we made it from the inspection spot into their back parking lot where they said it was fine for us to stay for the night. So that's really nice. And then today they're gonna get everything fixed because we don't want this to happen to our bus. So it is gonna be a little expensive for us to fix it. We we're hoping to have a little more time before having to have this much money put into it. Uh, but that's just the way it goes, is that things have costs. So we'll figure it out. This is what Cypress does while we Well, 27 hours later at Les Schwab, we finally have our rear diff fixed, our brakes fixed, six new tires, a bunch of good advice, <laughs> and they were really nice here. Oh, they're very, very nice, very welcoming, very accommodating, awesome. We also have a tire. <laughs> That is now in our bus. <laughs> but now we have a spare. But we have to find a spot for it. <laughs> that was an exhausting last two days. But we made it to our campsite, which is up here in the mountains, even though it's smoky. And it is nice to have the bus back and working. We also had continuous problems with our faucet. I think because it bounced so much uh, and it was a bad design. <laughs> The faucet uh, is very top heavy and it kept loosening up. So the whole faucet would just be loose in the sink. Uh, so we went down to Aaron's and he helped fabricate just a custom backing plate. The problem turned out to be that the C ring that came with it that normally holds the faucet to the counter, that had very fine threads and the C had loosened up. So it would just slip threads whenever it bounced. So we went down to a construction surplus store and we found a heavier duty ring off of a different sink and we got that. And then that also didn't work. So uh, Aaron knows how to do TIG welding. So we took that ring, clamped it down to the, the size of it, re-welded it in the smaller size, and then built a custom backing plate so that it won't wiggle on the metal of the sink and then sandwiched it all back together. And that has worked great. So that was really nice to get that fixed. Uh, so thank you, Aaron and Jen, for helping out on doing that and giving us a place to stay while we work on some of our bus upgrades. <laughs> the lighting in the kitchen is 12 volt lighting and we would call it our murder lights because every time the water pump would come on, all the lights would flash and dim and we weren't quite sure why. And then we tried to test our heater and the heater wouldn't turn on when the pump was on and the lights went to like zero when that happened. So definitely the wire that connects the main battery bank to the kitchen side needed to be upgraded. So we spent about $60 on new wire and re-ran those wires. Fortunately, I had put in a conduit and left fish wires in that conduit. So it was actually really easy to upgrade those wires and that fixed everything. Our water pump no longer overheats. The murder lights are just regular lights now and the heater works and just everything is perfect. So should have done that in the first place. That was definitely a mistake on my part. We also discovered that our DC to DC charger coming off of the alternator was not working. <laughs> what was happening was that the circuit breaker we had gotten was not working to its rated amperage. So it was just soft failing. So it would just turn off, but we wouldn't notice it because it would just not charge as much. And then it would turn on five seconds later and then continue for three seconds and then turn off. So we weren't getting very much charge off of the alternator. So I fixed that and then that charger was overheating immediately because we were maxing out its 30 amp level. So we ended up having to buy the upgraded size of that. So now we have a 50 amp DC to DC charger with a fan on it that charges off of our upgraded alternator because this bus has the upfitter alternator. So it has a ton of power coming out of that. So that's finally fixed. 
We also found that our portable solar panel was supposed to be putting out 300 watts, but it's only putting out 100. So we're gonna need to replace that. But unfortunately, the nice solar panels that actually work to their stated value uh, are pretty expensive. So that's a future upgrade. So we're ending this video with some sad news. My brother died in September. Um, it was unexpected. Um, he had battled alcoholism for the last 20-ish years, uh, and we were just celebrating a thousand days sober for him. And, and he was doing really good. He was 41 and he passed away in his sleep. So we spent time yeah. but, with Alice's parents and helped them out and took some time to process it all and understand that it's going to be an ongoing process. And the last memory we have, the last time we saw him was when we were working on... <laughs> The last time we saw him was when we worked on the fridge. And, and that was really good. He reached out and wanted to help. And he was doing really good. He was doing really good. It was really nice to spend that time with him. Yeah. So, he'll be missed.